Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to explain how to repair this Delta faucet. This is a Delta Foundations, also sometimes known as a classic. Also, they make a commercial version. This is either a 501, a 510, or a 520, depending on what bottle you've actually got, but they're all pretty much the same. Now, we'll show you a quick little video here on how to figure out what exact product you got, but we're going to show you how to repair all of them. Right, how do you find the spec and the model for your particular Delta faucet and whether it has a cartridge or just a ball? It's pretty easy, just search Delta faucets. In my case, it's the first hit. Go to Service and Parts. And in Service and Parts, you can go to Common Repair Part Finder, Bathroom. And there are the four different types of common parts for leaks. This is all we're going to need, this little repair kit. We bought this one to show you items it comes with, and some people will have these single throw handle cartridges, but that doesn't answer the question of which model do you have. Go back to service and parts and go to try our product finder, and you just drill through. Bathroom in my case, sink faucet. This is confusing for people, single hole or center set. Single hole means that there's one hole through the surface of the sink. My case, it's a center set, even though I have a single throw, I have a center set. I actually have two lines coming up. Click center set in my case. I, it's a single throw. It is not electronic, it's stainless or chrome, and it really doesn't make any difference for these parts. Anyway, click view matching products. And you can see here, we're talking about foundations B501LF, foundations 510, B510LF, and so on and so forth. There's also classic 501LFs and commercial units. All right, back to the repair. Okay, now we're back. Let's get this thing repaired. So we're going to show you how to repair it without any repair kit. We're also going to show you how to repair it with a basic repair kit that I bought for $7 Canadian. Uh, so about five, six US. Uh, and also this slightly larger kit, uh, which was about $13 Canadian. So for easy math, call it $10 US. Let's get to it. It's pretty straightforward. What we need to do is turn the water off, pull the handle off, and then replace some components inside. And trust me, you can do this. Don't pay somebody to do it, you can do it. So the first thing we need to do is turn the water off. Otherwise we're gonna have lots of problems up top, so just go uh, beneath in your cabinet and turn your valves off. Now mine were incredibly stiff, you know, because it never been turned off in 25 years. So don't worry about sort of giving them a good push. Um, yeah, we wanna just crank them off. Okay, we've got the water line off. What I need to use is an Allen key to get this off. Uh, however, if you bought the $13 Canadian or so $10 US kit, it comes with a little Allen key. So just to show you how that works, we'll use the one in the kit, even though we don't really need it. It's this guy here. So pop it in. And it's also called a hex nut, by the way, in case you're confused by what an Allen key is. Okay, so back it off. You don't have to pull it all the way out and yank it, pull it out. Now, just remember, this is a post but it's probably been on there for decades, so you may have to really force it. Uh, don't worry about jiggling it, uh, just yank it up. Okay, now that we've got that off, let's show you how to repair it without any uh, tools. There's a nut on top here, that uh, a bonnet cap, just a cap nut here, and what you wanna do if you wanna fix this is tighten down some of the rubber seals that are in here. So how do you do that? Well, take, get yourself some water pump pliers or channel locks as they're sometimes called, or a large adjustable, and put it on and crank it down to the right, clockwise. And what that will do is put added pressure on the seals that are in there. Uh, however, in my case, I've already done that and it didn't work very well, so I'm going to actually take it apart. Uh, so I'm just gonna back this off. There it is. Yeah, I can do it with my hand now. Pop it off. Now, what I wanna do is, if I have a, a full cartridge in here, you use this tool, pop it down, and you turn it to loosen the cartridge out, pull it out and replace it, easy to do. If, however, you've got one like mine, you've got this plastic cap on top, uh, what you need to do is pop it off without damaging the brass ring below. So you can use a slotted screwdriver, a flat screwdriver, and just go around to pop it out. There we go. Then there's also this rubber washer, this rubber gasket that's in here. Now, how do you get, because you want to pull that ball, oh, that actually just popped out. Normally, you can't do that. Normally, that's just too hard to do. Um, but uh, anyway, it's come out, so that's good. Now, let's take a look at what's inside here, because that's really what we have to repair. So something that has never happened to me before in all of my years of this type of work 
is this little rubber seal actually sprung out and popped across the room when I was changing the camera and turning the lens on. So I just put it back in there so you could see it because I want you to understand what's in there. So there's that little rubber grommet that I just pulled out. There's also this spring. Now one of the things you can do if you're really tight and you just want to patch this up is you can elongate that spring. That'll probably help a lot. Uh, and then you can just put it back together. However, I've spent the 13 whole dollars and I'm going to replace it. That spring is not even, it's conical. So you can think of it as kind of a pyramid shape, even though it's round, so it's conical. And the narrow part is at the top, the fatter end is at the bottom. So just remember that when you're putting the new one back in. So by the way, I'm pulling this out and it might look like I'm putting some force on it. I'm not, there's no effort here at all. Okay, so let's pop those out. They're just inside and then let's get the new ones. Now, before I do anything, I really should have closed that because if things get down there, that's not good. That was a mistake on my part. Okay, so let's go to our new kit. There's the spring, one spring, there's the other spring, and there are the two new seals. So let's put them in. So as I said, you wanna put the fat end down. So I'm just gonna grab my needle nose pliers here and pop that in. Which pretty, pretty much means just setting it in. There's a, uh, a fatter, tougher end and a thinner, lighter end. The thinner, lighter end goes down and the fatter, tougher end goes up because that is what's gonna be squished by the ball. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that out. I bet I can do that with my hand. I bet I don't even need the needle nose to do this. I was doing the needle nose to show you how that you could do it with that. Yeah, there you go, it just pops on, that's easy. Now, I'll use the needle nose for the next one just to show you. Now I'm gonna use my hands, <laughs> sorry. That squished in nice. There we go, when you can feel them going up and down, that's happy. Now, look at the ball, and you wanna make sure the ball doesn't have any calcium deposits on it. If it does, you wanna clean them off. Not a bad idea just to wash it off regardless. I'm just gonna use my hands because this one's pretty clean. And you might ask, well, how do you put it back in? Because you didn't really pay attention. Well, it's not very hard. Uh, what you have to do is uh, look for that flat spot right at the top and then have that flat spot painting, uh, pointing dead forward. So there it is. And you'll see it just sort of, it pops in. You can sort of feel it. There it is. So that's happy. Now I'll take the new washer. And I say washer, it's just a seal. And that gray plastic looking part of the ring goes down, not up. Then I'm going to use this new cap and the cap has a triangular bottom. That is what you want to be pointing to the bottom. And you'll, you really can't screw it up because there's a notch right here. Uh, so you can see that notch and there's a notch on the side here. It's really no way to screw that up. And you gotta push that in tight. And I see in my case, actually I'm gonna have to pull this off because here, the plastic from the old one is still there. I gotta get rid of it. Oh, there we go, gone. Okay, let's do this whole thing again. So I'll put the black. Okay, push that down as hard as you can, making sure that that notch is in the slot. And you need to make sure when you're doing this that the point of this little triangle is dead center. So uh, this is gonna want, this plastic guy is gonna wanna turn when you uh, put this on, it needs to be in that notch. And if it's not, you're going to be in trouble. So you can see here it's popping out a bit and I'm going to have to push it down hard with this bonnet cap and then start screwing. There we go, I think I got it. Yeah, that feels good. Now I just need to keep tightening this up. Nope, that bonnet cap, that little guy is off a bit. I need, to, there it is. So I'm gonna use a screwdriver to stop him from turning. There we go, much better. Oh yeah, that's great. So I can tighten that down with my hands. There we go. Now at the end, I take my adjustable wrench or any kind of wrench that you've got, or even water pump pliers, channel locks, and crank it down so that it's tight, but not over tight. Remember, you don't wanna stress those threads too much. Now, I'm going to make sure this isn't leaking anymore by just putting this on. And you'll see there's just a hole there, so it just goes on that pin and it stays on because that set screw 
catches on the notch there. So there it is. Now what I'm gonna do before I do anything else is turn the water lines back on underneath the sink. Oh, yeah, I should probably turn that off. What do you think? There we go. Okay. That looks good. Swiveling nice. No more drip. Nope. So now all I'm gonna do is turn the water line back off. Tighten up that set screw. Don't be afraid to put a little torque behind them. Their threads are pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty darn good to me. Let's turn the water back on. Water valves are on. Hot is hot. Cold is cold. Mix is mix. There we go. So in my case, for this type of unit, I didn't need all of these other parts, and I certainly didn't need the kit uh, with this cartridge remover. I could have just bought the $8 kit, but I've got the whole thing and I'm not obviously going to return it now. Hey, if you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up. Super appreciated. Subscribe's also appreciated. We do a lot of these sort of cell phone repairs, these DIY things. And if you have any questions or concerns, you know, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment in the comment section below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will. So we hope this helped. And hey, have a great day. Bye-bye.